Welcome to Empowered. We're so glad that you decided to join us uh, and to tune into this um, broadcast today. And of course, um, I'd like to also welcome my co-host, Ron Simpson. Welcome, Ron. Glad to be here. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. And today our topic is on scriptures for abuse-free relationships. And Ron, today we're going. I'm going to talk to you about the scriptures, and you're going to try to explain to us what they that, that what they mean to you. And since you are a theologian, I, I'm pretty sure you can shed a lot of light I on will, these scriptures. I will try my best to see where <laughs> where I can go with it. And and remember, some of this is going to be based on my well, actually, all of it's going to be based on my experience, <laughs> right? And and my my uh, uh, my research and whatnot. So. There, you know, and the thing to keep in mind is that there's always other explanations, good That's explanations. Right. Uh, we're just going to offer you a few of the ideas that, uh, that come up today in regards to these scriptures. Okay, I want to read this. Um, the first text that we want to talk about um, deals with physical abuse. And, of course, we are talking about scriptures for abuse-free relationships. And the first scripture I'd like to share with you is taken from Ephesians 5, 28 and verse 29. And it says, So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. So we're talking about physical abuse. How does this text relate to um, an individual or a couple not being in a physical abusive relationship? Well, this is a, an age-old dilemma when you look at the scripture because um, it's very difficult for people to practice the golden rule. Mm -hmm. And that is, is do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And this scripture really is talking uh, very much about that. One of the things that I was thinking about as I read this scripture was an old saying, and it goes something like this, that the smallest packages are people who are wrapped up in themselves. Ooh, and, <laughs> and this is a problem, Pr yeah. pride and, and uh, not being able to be very sympathetic mm -hmm. towards another individual um, in regards to how does it feel when you say this or when you do this because we have a, a tendency to look out for our own needs yeah. first. But I, I think that the scripture really explains itself. Uh, if you look towards the end of it, it talks about the way Christ nourishes the church, the way sure. Christ takes care of the church, the way Christ takes care of his people. And if we really look at that perspective in regards to how um, Christ would do it, because we always want to follow Christ's example, then really what it comes down to is putting the needs of another individual before our own. And this is one of the big um, dilemmas uh, that we face in regards to, to life in general. I mean, if you stop and think about it, when you're driving down the road in a car uh, and you want to be the first person through the <laughs> intersection, you want to be the first person that gets into the lane so you can get to your exit, just one car ahead of the next person. Mm -hmm. All of us probably <laughs> at one point in our life have done something like that. This scripture really talks about, about looking at your wife and saying, what are your needs and how can I meet those needs? Particularly in relationship to how do I view myself? Now, if you don't view yourself very well, I think you're going to have a hard time. And that's what I was going to address because the text says, um, he who loves his wife loves himself, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. So is there an, an, an implication that if a man does not love himself, he is not capable of loving his wife or nourishing her? Well, I, th I think that people are capable of loving, although it might not be extremely healthy, um, but nourishing that mm -hmm. might be a whole other issue. All right. Because you're looking at somebody, if they cannot emotionally handle who they are and themselves, how do they possibly expect to help meet the needs of another individual, particularly in the marriage relationship? And if you look at the marriage relationship as a union, um, those two people need to feed off of each other in a That's positive right. way. Mm -hmm. And so I, I look at that as saying, look at when we have respect for who we are, 
when we have the confidence that God can instill in us, then we are in, an in a place that we can take the opportunity to love somebody and give them of ourselves in a very healthy, productive way. Okay, so um, just remind our, our viewing audience that we're talking about scriptures that promote abuse-free relationships. Okay, so we just discussed the physical um, abuse and, and a text um, that was taken from Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 29. And now we're going to deal with emotional abuse, um, a text that can be used to, um, to support abuse-free relationships when it comes to emotional abuse. And this one is taken from 1 Peter 3, 7. And by the way, for our audience, all of these texts um, are taken from the clear word. And it says, Husbands, in the same way, be considerate as you live with your wives and treat them with respect as the weaker partner and as heirs with you of the gracious gift of life so that nothing will hinder your prayers. How does that... Um, produce abuse-free relationships as it relates to emotional abuse? Well, I think the key word there is respect. And I picked up on that with that scripture because, again, you're talking about a scripture where um, in, a, in a relationship there always has to be respect. Sure. And, you know, we look at abuse on so many different levels. Mm -hmm. And to be abuse-free, it's not just a matter of physically uh, hurting somebody necessarily. It's also emotionally hurting somebody. Right. Um, disrespect is one of those things that goes a long ways in how you speak to your spouse, right. how you mm -hmm. um, how you respond to them uh, in, in in physical ways, uh, mannerisms that people pick up well, pick up on, because somebody can look at you and they can watch the way you respond, and they can clearly see a lack of respect. When there is respect of who the individuals are, particularly as a man looks at his wife, if he looks at his wife, understanding who she is as a woman, and that's difficult for a man to do. <laughs> I will be the first to admit it. It's very difficult to understand uh, oftentimes, why does my wife respond that way? Why doesn't she think like me? Why doesn't she, you know, why does she, why does she act that way when I say this or do that? And really a lot of it comes down to this whole issue of respect. respect. Because, right. and respect isn't just giving people their own way. It's, it's being compassionate and understanding that people are unique and different. Yes. And, and understanding they're going to be different. They're going to respond differently. You know, it took me 25, mm -hmm. almost, well, probably 25 years at least to, to, to view my wife and to look at her, her in a way to say, you and I are different. We, we, we wear a different makeup. And so I change my tone. I mm. change my response. I listen more. And I practice humility because you need humility in a marriage. Yes. You absolutely need absolutely. humility in a, in a marriage. So I think this scripture really, in a lot of ways, comes down to the respect issue. But I do like what it says. And these, they always like to tie things at the end of these uh, scriptures in uh -huh. with that. So that you so you don't hinder your prayers. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know, my wife and I uh, in the evening just before we go to bed, I will take a little scripture, read a scripture, and then we pray. And I, it's just a short little session of of reading and praying, but it's a very special, unique bonding time that we have. We take turns reading, we take turns praying, and and we can pray for each other. And there's something that opens up that yes. whole respect issue yes. between a husband and wife that really helps this, us understand this scripture in treating each other with respect. Amen. I cannot add to that or take away. Great answer. Okay, so the next one we're going to talk about is economic abuse. And the text is taken from 1 Timothy 5, 8. If anyone does not provide for his relatives and especially for his immediate family, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Wow. You know, growing up, um, I had a father who I loved dearly, but he was an alcoholic. And a lot of the time that he could have spent with his family, a lot of the money, because we were basically poor growing up, Mm -hmm. I didn't think so at the time, but I mean, <laughs> yeah. and I, I saw what he deprived the family of emotionally and financially in regards to the welfare of his family. And I look at this scripture and there are direct um, 
I'd like to use the word commands, but there is good direction in the Bible that we have to be responsible, not just to look out for what we want, because there's a lot of things I want. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. I look at uh, music and sound equipment and things I'd love <laughs> to buy all the time. Mm -hmm. But then I think what comes first? Um, I think the needs of the spouse are to be met. I know that in some homes, and I won't speak for anybody in particular, but in some homes there are, there are situations where the husband controls the money to, at every aspect, and to me that is flat out wrong. There has to be some equality in the finances. Mm -hmm. uh, there needs to be an understanding together on budgets. There needs to be an understanding together on what, what you can do to make life better for your spouse in regards to the financial, the financial aspect. And, and money is important. It yes, really, really it is. is important. It is. And being responsible <laughs> with that means that as a man, you are going to be held responsible to a higher level of responsibility, particularly if you're the major breadwinner. Now, I realize that's not the case in everybody's home. That's right. A lot of women make good money, and yeah. kudos to them for doing it. But it works both ways. That's right. It works both that's ways. That's right. Very good. Okay. Now we come to sexual abuse. And for our viewing audience, we're talking about texts that can be used um, to support abuse-free relationships. Sexual abuse, Ephesians 5.21, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That scripture applies to sexual abuse. We can respond to it, obviously, in that direction, because mm -hmm. I think you can go other places with that. Sure. But I think in, we're in, in, in terms of sexual um, abuse, um, and we don't really want to dwell on the abuse side of this today. Exactly. Of course, we want to focus on the positive side exactly. of it. Exactly. So mm -hmm. my response, I, I will include probably a little bit of that, of each side of that, but we want to, again, focus on the positive side of this. What's healthy? And, you know, I'm going to have to go back to that respect word again, because Respect in the sexual aspect of a marriage is, is vitally important, mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. in the needs and the wants uh, um, and the desires between a husband and a wife um, sexually. Uh, I know that there are, um, I've seen examples, I've read examples and illustrations of situations where uh, particularly the men will take advantage of their wives uh, sexually and whether that's forcing them to do things that they don't want to do or forcing them to, to just to, uh, to sorry, so you can edit. sorry, you have to edit that. <laughs> or whether it's an issue of forcing them uh, into a, a sexual situation when they don't want to, because you know everybody has rights yes. in regards to individuals, right. and it's up to the husband and wife to create balance. But it's really up to the husband in this particular situation, as I'm reading this, to to show due respect to his wife and to love her in a tender, intimate way that shows reverence and respect. What would you say to those individuals or, or men in particular? And I, I just want to clarify that when we refer to the victim as a, a, um, a woman or a man as the abuser, we just want to clarify that anyone, it can go either way. But statistically, when it comes to um, some forms of these abusers, abuse or majority of forms of these abuse, it tends to be uh, the man who... who can be more abusive. But what does it mean when we think of a, sec of a sexual abusive relationship where the man feels that the wife is his property? That's some scary ground to go to, to, to tread on because, and I think it's a difficult one. I, I know that when I was younger and first married, it was very easy for me mm. to get caught up in this whole, you're mine, and every other guy that walked by was a threat mm. because don't look at her, don't talk to her, <laughs> don't say anything because she's mine. Oh. And, and I think as you mature, particularly in your relationship with God, you begin to understand that people are individuals mm -hmm. and people have choices. Mm -hmm. And when we look at words like submit and uh, in the Bible and some of these scriptures, we have to be very careful about what that means because submitting does not mean force and submitting does not mean uh, uh, taking what's not yours. That's right. Um, Good. S submitting is going to be a sub situation, particularly in the big biblical sense, because you have to look at the big picture scrip right. scripturally. Mm -hmm. And scripturally, um, you're talking about an, an even playing field. And we have to remember that it's two people that are a union. And if the Bible says that those two become one, then these are decisions that are going to be have to be made together. You don't take what's not yours and you don't, you don't force yourself in a situation that, that 
clearly is, is uh, unhealthy. Well, thank you, Ron. And I think what we're going to do, probably again, we're going to have to do a part two of this. We have about um, oh, four more texts that we'd like to share. And so for our audience, we just want to thank you for joining us. And we pray that God will continue to bless you. And we hope that you'll stay tuned for part two of our presentation on scriptures that can support and enhance abuse-free relationships. Thank you for watching and may God continue to bless you and always remember that you are empowered through Christ. We so much appreciate you viewing our program today. God has not given any of us the spirit of fear, but his spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. Therefore, we are pleased to provide this ministry to help you and others in your journey of healing from abuse. In order to continue doing this, we depend on financial support from viewers like you. Your donation is tax deductible and can be sent via a check or money order to our mailing address at Women's Healing and Empowerment Network or WHE Network, PO Box 9637, Spokane, Washington, 99209. You can also visit our website at whenetwork.com and click on the donation button. For your gifts of $25 or more, we will send you a special token of our appreciation. Thank you for your prayers. May God continue to bless you and yours as you partner with us to help empower abused lives.